genocide Israel is committing in Gaza. It's becoming so incredibly obvious what is happening there. Let's pull up this uh, Gallup poll before we play Rogan. But this is just a sh uh, you can see in this graphic here, a Gallup poll that was released yesterday showing how much public opinion has shifted on Israeli on Israel's military action in Gaza, even with the media blackout leading up to this moment, leading up to this poll like it's basically you know, We've been calling it a genocide since November or something like that. I mean, it was a ge slow genocide before October. 7th, right, frankly. right. Yeah. Um, but even with the it being so uh, s tilted in the favor of, of Israel's narrative in the mainstream press, it's becoming incredibly clear. Um, yeah, Republicans basically still support Israel's military actions. The question is, do you approve or disapprove of the military action Israel has taken in Gaza? In November, 71% of Republicans approved, 23% disapproved. Now that has slightly changed. 64% approved, 30% disapprove. Independence, now in March 2024, 60% disapprove of Israel's military actions. That's a change from 48% in November. And Democrats in November were already beginning to see that this was disproportionate. 63% were disapproving. Now 75% of Democrats disapprove. So Biden is never going to win over those Republicans. He should be fairly concerned about those independents there. 60% of them disapprove of Israel's military actions. And clearly, I would imagine, by extension, our support of them, especially if that were to be made clear how extensively we support Israel as their chief uh, diplomatic cover in the world, um, as their protector, as their backer, as the mob boss behind their actions, and as their arms supplier. Now, that shift in Republic opinion is now reflected by Joe Rogan <laughs> here, who says the word genocide on his program when speaking to Kurt Metzger, who is going to town on this joint, by the way. Um, and it, it, they're talking about this within the context of Candace Owens being let go or the parting of ways from uh, uh, the Daily Wire. Right. But who? I mean, she's anti-Semitic. She is anti-Semitic, and, and she <laughs> backed off. I think, frankly, the Israel stuff. I think she's been pretty actually tepid on that. Um, of course, that was the real problem that they had with her um, more as, uh, more than her actual anti-Semitism, which does exist. Well, uh, yeah, she, they didn't fire her when she was defending Kanye, who was saying, "I love Hitler" over and over again. They fired her when she started criti criticizing Israel. Hey, I want to know what was she, what she was fired for, because was it criticism of Israel? Was it? I mean, did she show that Edward Snowden video that he put up on Twitter that shows oh, them maybe. drone bombing those kids that are those men? I should say unarmed people that were walking towards the rubble that yeah. clearly weren't causing yeah. any danger to anybody. Yeah, right. They just bombed them. You yeah, know, it's your duty. It's just like for Biden or whoever you like, you're supposed to cover up for them because but the whole thing yeah. is like they're always saying they're only targeting Hamas and everybody else is a casualty. Well, if those guys are just unarmed civilians and they're walking alone. That's what they appear to be. Dresden. And you just blast them from the sky with robots. This is the tragedy of war. Yeah, this is insane. And no one knows what to think now, because if you can't talk about that, if you can't say that's real, then you're saying that genocide is okay as long as we're doing it. And that is what we're saying. And if you're saying that from a perspective of someone who literally went through the Holocaust, or your, your people, your tribe, went through the fucking Holocaust, and now you're willing to do it? I hope the irony's not lost on you. It, it, it's so nuts. It's so hard to imagine that someone where a, cu a culture, like a country was like officially founded in what, 47? 48. 48? Okay. Officially founded. So that's so recent. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you guys are willing to do what was done to you that led you to believe that you needed to start your own country? You're yeah. willing to do that at least on a small scale in Gaza. Like there's nothing left. If you see the videos, let's see, let's see some recent footage of Gaza. Yeah, we've, we've and so that. I guess they show that. Um, so, I mean, the problem that Rogan has here is that he's right about the genocide point, but he's wrong about almost every other part of, like, the justification for the creation of Israel. Um, a quick history lesson, uh, the Balfour Declaration was in 1917. Um, Balfour himself was anti-Semitic and did not want Jews in Britain, um, but there was also a nationalist Zionist movement 
Herzl is at the head, the figurehead of that. Been around which, for about you know a quarter century before the exactly. Alpha Declaration. Uh, and then con- it did uh, because of the persecution of Jews in Europe begin to ramp up and escalate during that time period, and it was the Holocaust and the anti-Semitism in Europe that drove many European Jews to Israel. And so that it, that is in part why the state of Israel was founded, but it was mostly founded as a nationalistic project settler and colonial a project. settler colonial project, um, which before it was Israel, it was a British colony. And so like to frame it within this context of your people, your, your people experience a genocide and then you turn around and you do it to other people. Yeah. I, again, it misses the point. And I think it actually inflames anti-Semitic sentiment because it's not about that. It is about settler colonialism, not about religious war, not about ideology, not about culture, which is what he kept saying. It's a right Not even primarily about the Holocaust. Not even primarily about the Holocaust. It's used as justification. I mean, Netanyahu spreads a conspiracy theory that it was actually the Palestinian Grand Mufti who gave Hitler the idea to exterminate the Jews, that he wasn't even that committed to it. The Palestinians are the ones who are worse. So in fact, it is used as a propaganda object. Now, I welcome Joe Rogan saying this. I would not be shocked if he contradicts himself in two days. Okay, this is not somebody who is our friend. This is <laughs> those not tunnels some- are pretty scary, bro. I mean, yeah. this would be just like how he's like, you're not on the team if you're anti-immigrant, and right. now he's basically like they're invading us, uh, <laughs> sending hordes. The only reason I find this fascinating is because of the fact that he's saying it. Yeah, and he's a gatekeeper on ideas. Really, yes, this, and the fact that like anybody people. who's listening to that that show has a lot of influence. It's becoming so obvious and I'm just there's part of me that's just like deeply resentful of the fact that people just didn't pay attention when we were when folks like us were saying that it was a genocide when we were being called anti-Semitic because of it. It's not what was us. It's just like if people had come to this obvious conclusion before this point and they need, how many lives could have been saved and how many their bubble bro, it, it, bro, it bro, a computer bubble <laughs> like uh like bro, bro, Candace Owens. what's happening in gaza joe brogan just broke the news yeah i know you know, just, I, know. <laughs> I mean but you know we'll take it we'll take it you know yeah we'll he, take it even crediting did, did snowden leak that video or did he just like retweet he it? probably just retweeted like, it yeah. no I mean, he didn't leak their, it Al their, universe, did. of, their yes. universe of people is so like oh candace owens said something and snowden said something so now we can acknowledge it as reality it's <laughs> it's in front of kurt metzger it's it's it is an amazing bubble to like witness uh and uh yeah um, but, but I'm but, glad that the word genocide is pu- uh, punctured in. Yes. I mean, and we're beginning to the, the word genocide is almost uh, too, too, too delicate of a term for what we're experiencing. This is an, an attempt for an, an extermination because genocide means killing a group in part or in whole. Plenty of people um, uh, who like veterans of the fight against South Africa apartheid have said that actually this um, settler colonial project is um, more difficult than the South Africa one in terms of prognosis because they don't want to have Palestinians there working <laughs> as laborers. They want them gone so they can have the land. Right, right. And that's what we're seeing in Gaza right now. That's why you see Jared Kushner talk about, uh, um, you know, the different types of properties that could be made there. You have literally sales going on on Zoom across uh, um, to sell. Like, it, I mean, I don't know how, how that stuff's legal, but maybe that's, you know, we should get an expert on that. Oh, no, don't. I saw today that there uh, are uh, donation tax deduct- You can donate to a group called um, IMTI Zionism. Obviously, do not do this. They are ta- it's a tax deductible group that you can donate to that helps block the aid trucks from entering into Gaza. Um, I was just about to donate until you told me not to. Emma. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems pretty obvious. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's, yep. that's that's it's it's. I mean, you, and you know, video after video comes out, posted usually posted by the um, the individuals themselves, showing them blocking the aid happily, pr- proudly block, blocking the aid. Partying. And got the IDF soldiers posting their war crimes. Their their we. They, the, I I really do think the most bizarre videos they might not be as you know gory as some of the the other ones but to me just something about all the and the fact that they're so widespread the videos of the idf soldiers with the women's 
like underwear, undergarments, the it's bras, disgusting. the, the it's panties. Disgusting. It's just disgusting. I just can't get over them. So many of them, too, posting that. Playing with children's soccer balls in their uh, homes that have been demolished and, and laughing about it and talking about how beautiful the beach is. You just see how deeply the culture of impunity and the brainwashing, the extreme brainwashing, um, how, how that's taken root. And again, like there are many hyper religious freaks, uh, Zionists that believe this is the holy land and they use religious justification. I mean, the settlers are, uh, there's a good amount of them there, but for like Benjamin Netanyahu is not an extremely religious man. Um, Neither were the labor Zionists who were foundational to the formation of the country. The religious element became a very useful tool. Right. <laughs> and it is to this day. That is what fascism uh, can harness is this imagined mythical pa uh, past um, or like this, this utopian vision of a society that is built for you and by you at the expense um, of millions of the thousands of people whatever the case is and you uh, do whatever you can to achieve that goal it's just the way that it's sold as opposed to the the driver behind the exterminationist violence um before we move on from gaza i just wanted to 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 play this uh we'll just do the reporter part um i'll explain uh what she said earlier so um Fran Francesca Albanese is the uh, special rapporteur for human rights at the United Nations, and she has been working on a report on what's happening in Gaza, and she entitled it The Anatomy of a, a Genocide, and she said the word genocide. This is a, a really important report uh, within the context of the United Nations, and she was... She, she didn't hold back um, and, and said this is the, some of the worst humanity can offer um, in, in what she saw there. After she made her announcement about her findings, a German reporter questioned her and asked her whether she had sufficient evidence to deem this a genocide. And I found her answer to be as straightforward and as clear as it gets. And you're quoting uh, the president of Israel, the prime minister, the defense minister, and uh, some uh, top militaries. Um, but these are only quotes uh, given in speeches or in other circumstances. I would like to ask you, do you have a written document by the government which a with a clear intent to commit genocide. Do you think that in Rwanda and in Bosnia Herzegovina any government officials wrote, wrote a document saying I want to commit genocide? Have you seen anything like that? I'll, I'll answer this for you. No, it doesn't work like that. There is, those statements are just the tip of the iceberg because I have a word limit in, uh, in my reports, which is quite strict. Otherwise, we could write an encyclopedia with what has been said and done. And I said it, and I mean it. The, if the International Criminal Court is serious about investigating what Israel has done in Gaza, as of the 7th of October, only as of the 7th of October, it will be busy for decades. So that is just the, exactly right. That is exactly right. Um, I mean, that is, we had uh, Hanno uh, Hauenstein on, who is a German reporter. We had him on a few weeks ago just to speak about Germany's relationship with the state of Israel. Besides the United States, Germany, I think, is the number two or number three, one of the top weapons dealers to the state of Israel, which if uh, to borrow an old uh, Norm Macdonald bit, a bit, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not a history buff, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I have an understanding of what Germany was complicit in, in terms of the genocide that they committed against the Jews, millions and millions 
of Jews and uh, uh, other groups as well. The Roma, LGBTQ people targeted, massacred, exterminated by the, G the, the German government. And instead of reparations coming from the Germans in the form of like, I, I don't know, continued financial reparations or um, other uh, other ways to repair the in, in, in incredible harm that they have done to millions and millions of people. They have outsourced it to the Palestinians and says, well, you know, you bear the brunt of our crimes. And that is, I think, so apparently just so central right now to the to to the german power structure because they can't even really acknowledge it uh the the what the reality of what they've done or actually you know bear, bear the are brunt doing of it. right continuing to not actually uh make amends for i mean and the the idea that there is not explicit statements of intent here is just it, that exists nowhere in reality except on the adl um talking points list that media assets get uh, this there's this guy um we'll go to this here bradley can you hit a translate bio on this fella here um uh, deputy speaker of the knesset member of the foreign affairs and security committee the 23rd uh knesset and the 25th knesset now bradley go to that tweet that i have of this fella and don't translate it right away okay look at that that's in hebrew nice uh, now translate post for me bradley uh, he says, erase Gaza. Nothing else will satisfy us. It is not acceptable that we have a terrorist authority next to Israel. Do not leave a child there to expel all the remaining ones at the end so that they will not have a resurrection. So, like, it, 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 it's a waste of time and breath. And it, that yeah, was on people's October time. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, uh, sir, Matt Leck. Can you uh, please point me to the official government document that has those words? Otherwise, I don't believe <laughs> That's it. just a tweet. <laughs> she didn't say, or he didn't say genocide. So the exact Exact same, really the exact same type of denialism is uh, used to throw sand people's uh, in sand people's eyes over the actual Holocaust and Shoah. Well, that's my other question is, was, you know, the, the Germans, the Nazis talked over and over again about the final solution, the final solution, the final solution. But, you know, Holocaust what, deniers was, lean on the same lack of. Was it a gen Right. Yeah. Right. Because they didn't say genocide and the final solution. It really is despicable and Absolutely. despicable, especially coming from a German. German reporter. Yeah. And a, a, a Berlin newspaper, too. I, one of the bigger ones. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, it is, we are surrounded by people who will echo this. And, um, uh, in, in our media and ecosystem as well, and they should be treated with the utmost hostility, hostility and lack of respect because the, what they are is the modern uh, version of Holocaust deniers. And I will also say, okay, one more thing. Um, I do think that comparing Hamas or like the threat of the Palestinian resistance to that of Nazis and the Holocaust is also Holocaust denial. It's Nazi shit. It's Nazi. It's all it's Holocaust revisionism at its best and Holocaust denial at its worst, because what you are doing is completely disassociating the context and the reality of what the Nazi ideology was, which was a extreme far right nationalist ideology that came not from space, but from political situations and from, in, uh, you know, uh, in a reality that was less than a hundred years ago. And some of those systems are still in existence to this day. So when you make those assertions about resistance to the settler colonial state of, of Israel, what you're doing is downplaying the political realities that gave rise to the Nazis and to one of the worst crimes that has ever been inflicted upon humanity in the Holocaust. You water it down and you muddy the waters and you make it unclear to people from a historical context. It's really, really disgusting. So. All right, let's take a call. Oh, that's a great, great point. Yeah, let's take a call. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Bender. Thank you very much.